Back in 1995, his hometown of Cochrane, Alberta, honored George Fox by naming a street after him, the George Fox Trail. It's a dead-end street. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what's the message there? That certainly hasn't been the career. (laughs) I I raise it really because it ties into the song you sang for us before, that that even, you know, your little town is is being paved. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's really grown. It's been discovered. Yeah. And... uh, yeah, George Fox, it's not really a dead end yeah. street, it's, uh, but uh, in fact, it's a very uh, beautiful spot there, right along the Bow River. Yeah. And I would say probably one of the highlights of my career, having that, uh, you know, and you've interviewed enough people to know sometimes it's, uh, it's the hometown. Ta- yeah. I, I've got a street named after me, Wadeen, it was without a doubt the single greatest honor. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, uh, you haven't embarrassed anybody, so that makes you feel pretty good. Well, so far, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we hope. The whole question about the land and the farm, and, and y- in a sense, I mean, there's some politics in your mm-hmm. lyrics there. It's saying we've got to pay attention to this. You know, Katie Lang takes on the beef farmers and all of this. Is there mm-hmm. a role? Are you, should your music have those messages? Well, it's funny because uh, I think people don't trust politicians. They they really look more to uh, rock stars, country singers, or whatever that to as role models. And yeah. you know, they're you know with the benefits and and things like that. I think they uh, their words have a lot more weight somehow. Yeah. People. Uh, so, for me, yeah, I think the biggest one of the biggest. Um, uh, praises I guess I've had is after doing a 4-H show uh, in, in Calgary there was a, a I don't know how many screaming 4-H'ers out for this concert but after the show I signed autographs till I you know my my face was sore from smiling and my <laughs> fingers were sore from signing but uh, one of the parents came up and says George you know we really appreciate uh, you being a good role model for our kids but it, it didn't really cross my mind that you know that was one of the functions uh, but at that moment, I, I, you know, it made me feel really good. And so that's always been a big part of, I was never actually, for the record, never actually in 4-H. I was around 4-Hers. And but you've taken this up as a cause. I mean, you really have, and you talk about farm values and the importance of the family farm and, yeah. and the work ethic, in a sense. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, uh, hard work never killed anybody, but why take a chance is what I say. But uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, I wish every uh, kid could have an opportunity to go work on the farm for a summer. But uh, for me, it's, I get more out of it, I think, than the, the clubs because I get a chance to go back and, and visit. Uh, you know, we always get a chance maybe to go to somebody's ranch for, for lunch yeah. or whatever. And I really enjoy that part of it. It's one of the great divides in this country, and we see it in the, in the course of debates on things like gun control, for mm-hmm. example, in this, where you really see a rural-urban split, where people really have very different worldviews. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's, it's the same with any kind of split, and, and we all know which is the big one in Canada, but uh, yeah. to get a chance to go into communities and and see the people who are all you know uh just trying to put uh food on the table for the kids they all basically have the same problems and as a as a a musician uh, entertainer you get a chance to travel and meet people and uh i always say you know i i'd live anywhere in canada uh as long as it's in canada because uh it's all a you know if you treat people right they always seem to treat you right back and uh uh it's, you know, it's all in how you, uh, you know, communicate with people, I guess, really. Mm-hmm. You said, I know you've traveled to Australia recently, and, and you said you actually felt more at home there than you ever did in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess because it's space and because there's some similarities. Just a couple of questions on that. I mean, why didn't the U.S. embrace you in the way that Canada and Brazil and Australia and everybody else has? Are you too Canadian? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like Tim Hortons. I never, <laughs> never made it in the States. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I don't know. I, I, you know, there I was singing songs like Clearly Canadian. And uh, uh, in, in Nashville, I think it's more important to, uh, you know, they invented the wheel when it comes to country music. And when you go in there, even to try and change the hubcap, you know, it's quite a, 
uh, quite a task. So, uh, yeah, I always felt sort of like I was trying to sing it the way I, I felt it and uh, wasn't always kind of with, I don't think, uh, you know, the first thing that like, I would never wear a cowboy hat because uh, to me, you know, my dad, every time he went to town, he'd put on a different pair of shoes and uh, take his cowboy hat off. Yeah, good so, dressed up. <laughs> yeah. So I always felt there was sort of, it was sort of a, uh, you know, phony or something in a way. And, and uh, uh, but anyway, I mean, uh, I, I've had a lot of good uh, relationships in Nashville. We've had a lot of, you know, I, I was, I'm not bitter at all about, how, you know, because I like to have a nap in the afternoon. And I tell you, if you make it big in it's the States. It's too tense down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll continue our conversation with George Fox, who is clearly Canadian. 